What's up? I'm Shift, and this is what's rage-worthy for the last time. Ooh, the last time for the regular season. We are all the way through all five weeks. Finishing off the whole PPL regular season was, of course, North America. We would see four of the five teams going up. We would start things off with Splice taking on G2. Needed to be a good one for Splice, I think, to kind of give them some kind of a, hey, we can, we can play against caliber teams. I'm not going to say high caliber teams, but at least caliber teams. And they did okay for the most part. G2 would still win the set 3-1, but Splice would take map number one off of them in what was pretty surprising fashion. Throughout this last couple of weeks, or at least this last week, we'll say last couple of days, we've seen some very interesting picks in North America. It looks like finally they're trying out the Ying almost in full fashion. And beyond that, we're also seeing things like Maeve come out into the mix after seeing limited action of it in weeks previously. That wouldn't really be the, so much the case if it's not for the Maeve in this set. G2 would pretty much roll over Splice for the most part, but Splice looked okay. They looked better. I don't know if it was necessarily, though, that Splice was performing well against G2 or if G2 was just not performing all that well against Splice. It's kind of, you know, half of, you know, six of one and half a dozen of another at this point in time. It's kind of whatever g2 does lock in the number two slot of course after having that victory so they'll be the number two confirming their spot at hrx splice will fall obviously and they'll be a little bit lower in the qualifying series which we'll talk about more in weeks to come to finish off the rest of the entirety of the ppo though envy would take on the renegades and envy would start off at least stomping Renegades. Two 4 0s to start, and then they would actually get beat on Frozen Guard in a very surprising draft, to be honest. There's really no reason they should have lost in my book. It just kind of came down to, again, two off tanks playing together don't really mesh for success. So it was actually RNG taking Frozen Guard at a 4 3 score line. It was a close game. It started off with a 2 0, and then a 2 0 on the other side, and then it went back and forth the rest of the way. But Makoa has gone through now a lot more often, and that was probably one of the reasons that Indy would lose this game is because they were playing up against Makoa Fernando. But there was a Mave pick in there for RNG, which really kind of said, why? How would you do that? Not really 100% sure. And then also Envy would try playing Drogos on Frozen Guard, which again doesn't work out so well, which is one of the reasons why Mave, I think, was as successful as she was. But it was a Barrack and a Khan as the double front line up against a Makoa Fernando. What did you really expect was going to happen? And then they would play on Fish Market, and Envy would just win. That's all I got. Uh, other things, though, that I want to hit before we go, um, and I have to re-pull this up. I'm not prepared, as I should be. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about Thiel and his uh, leave of absence from the Fnatic starting roster, and he did actually open up an open letter as far as why he has opted to step away from the starting five and kind of sit as a sixth man. One of the most important things, if you want to find it, you can find it on Thiel's Twitter. It's just at ThielT underscore TV if you want to see it. It's also on the Fnatic website right now. Um, one of the things that really popped off uh, to me was the reasons why. Um, and the reasons of why the, the things change. A lot of people would say that Fnatic has always been a really solid team numerous number two slots in every land even including a couple of technically ppl finals wins throughout the entirety of this last year and a half but i can understand where he's coming from uh he goes on to say things like the feelings of irritation that would rise and fall depending on the the, the land that they were at became pretty clear that they needed to find some kind of a switch up they tried role swapping in-game leader swapping draft swapping mental attitude changes and eventually, after exhausting all their options, they uh, figured out that the only other thing they could possibly do is try a new player. And they came in with someone who was not a PPL frontliner, or was, and then wasn't, and now is again. And that was unbelievable, which I, I understand it. I understand the change, but as far as, like, trying it, it just feels weird to try it now. Why try it now when you are approaching a world championship run with, to be honest, a roster that really hasn't been contested with the exception of the fact that they don't make adjustments at LAN. I don't think it was necessarily a composition of roster that's giving them the problem. I don't, here's the thing. I don't see this Fnatic team winning world championships. 
no way. I just don't see it happening. I don't see them beating teams like Envy, Na'Vi, or even NIP at this point in time. We can even throw G2 in the conversation. It's hard to get a basis of that, but at least those three, Fnatic are not in the same class right now with how they are playing right now. Yes, there is still a month left to go. I just don't see it happening. That being said, you have the opportunity to at least be a top four team, if not a top two team, with Thiel in the roster. I, I just, this doesn't really make much sense to me. I still think that Thiel is one of the best frontliners in Europe, if not Paladins, period. Especially when it comes down to them running a solo frontline, which they did earlier this week, and it looked good, with the exception that it was unbelievable there and not Thiel. You put Bugsy on main tank, and it just does not feel great. It just does not feel fanatic. They had a very unique play style, one that was working, and honestly, the reasons that they were losing at LAN was not necessarily because they were a one-trick or anything like that. It just came down to the fact that a different team played better than them that day. Flat out. And yeah, in that article, Thiel says that he did not feel great about some of his performances at LAN. But I don't think that merits you saying, all right, I am an S-caliber frontline player. I'm going to take a step back and let a A-minus, B-plus frontliner take my role and then he's gonna they're gonna perform better i i don't see the i don't see the reasoning that practicality wise i don't see that being the case i think that if i'm gonna be my own personal opinion on it i, I mean don't get me wrong unbelievable's a great guy feels a great guy it's nothing to do with their personal character when i'm looking at a winning composition you put fanatic with feel versus fanatic versus unbelievable and the fanatic with feel wins i think nine times out of ten flat out i think that's just the way it is i think that you know feel can get in his mind a little bit too much and i think this was not necessarily that, but when he gets in those land environments, that ends up being the case. You think back to the first world championship, for instance, Burrito, D69, Field does not perform well the first three games. Then he performs like a monster the last four games of that grand finals. I don't know. I'm just saying it because it deserves to be said. That's all I got. That's what's rage worthy. Throughout the next week, we're going to be looking at the brackets whenever they come up with the teams, whenever they're deciding who they're playing up against. And we'll do some prediction shows very quickly just to kind of give you the pros, cons, and who we think is going to win. That's all we got for the regular season wrap-up. Again, it's Envy number one, G2 number two in North America, Navi number one, NIP number two in Europe. They are automatically qualify in those slots for HRX. Everybody else has to play through the qualifier bracket, which, again, we'll be talking about more later. That's all I got. Have a good weekend. Later. Bye-bye.